Okay, today we are looking at the HP Systems Insight Manager Insight Control Tool for migrating from a logical server to another logical server. With the Insight Control Tool, there's four different paths that we can take. We can go from a physical to a ProLiant, a physical to a virtual server, a virtual to a ProLiant, or a virtual to virtual. For the purposes of today's demo, we are going to go from a physical box that we have running to a virtual environment. I will go back to my screen here. And we have several servers in our environment. The one that I'm going to migrate today is actually, let's pick this one here, Vinyl Records 00. This is an older ProLiant DL360 Generation 5, and we're going to turn that into a virtual device. So once I've selected the server that I want, I can go to my deploy pull down, and I want to choose the option that I want. I want to go from a physical to a virtual environment. Selecting that will pull up the actual migration tool itself. The first screen that you get to, which is step one of eight, it gives you the information on the server you just chose. If you hadn't chosen a server previously, you could put in the server name or the IP address and click on Show Server. It'll come back with the server details so that you can verify you're migrating the correct server. Now, once you've verified that you have the right server, there is an agent that needs to be deployed to the actual server that's going to be migrated. To deploy the agent, you click here, and you'll enter the credentials for that server. The credentials you enter have to be somebody with an admin capability to pull the information that we need out of the server for the actual migration. I've already applied the agents previously on this one, so we don't have to do that again. That process can take somewhere between four to six minutes. So if you can apply those agents ahead of time, go ahead and deploy them. Once you've done that, we can go to Next, and the next screen will come back. It'll give you the information that was provided by that agent. Information such as the server name, the IP address, what operating system is on there, the current processor and memory count. It also gives me information on the volumes that are attached to that unit. If there are more than one volume, they will show here and you can choose which one you want or all of them. It also gives you information down below in terms of how big the disk is on the server as well as how much that disk is being used. So in seeing that, it gives you what the minimum requirements are for your target. Once I've looked at this and confirmed that this is the right server and what I want, I can go to my next step. And we're already up to step three. At this point, we need to choose what host server am I going to put this VM on. In my environment, I know which ones I have so I can type in the host name. For mine, I want ES6, server 7. I can type in the host name and click Show Server. Just like when I went to choose the actual source for the migration, it'll give me the information on that details. In this instance, it's for the actual target. So I get the full host name, I get the IP address, and what the OS is currently running. I need to choose what virtualization layer I'm going to use, whether it's ESX or Hyper-V and I'm going to choose a ESX environment. Now from here, we do have to put in some information. We have to give it an IP address we can use for the migration and the normal subnet mask and gateway. So I know what my IP address is that I need to use for this. and I'm going to hit next again. Now it has gone out, it has queried that host server to get information on that server. I'm going to give it a name for the virtualized environment, and for this case, since I had vinyl records, I'll do VM VO records 00. So it somewhat resembles the actual host name of the server that we're migrating. We have to tell it how much memory we want, for that VM, the storage location, and hopefully we have enough free here. If there are more than one volumes attached to the actual target server, 
you can go to the drop down. It will list those storage devices out. But for now, 54 gigabytes is what's available on there. And since my minimum size is 16, that should be plenty. I also have a virtual switch, which is going to be the network used to do the transfer. And I'm going to go down. If you notice, there's a couple things down here that are not green, meaning that we need to address these before we can actually do the migration. First one says guest storage location doesn't have enough space. Well, that's because if we look at the source of the source, source system we want to migrate, the size is 69 gigabytes. The target only has 54 on it. However, we really only need around 16 or 17 because that's how much space we're using for the data that's currently on that drive. So I can change the size of this. I'm going to say 18 gigabytes. And just by clicking, it enters that information there. I also have to give it a disk name. And this can be whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to call this one pop data, since that's the name of the actual storage on the host box. So having done that, I now have a screen where the red marks are gone, which means I am complete with the information that I have to fill in on this page. From here, I can go to next. And this will go ahead and boot up that destination server. It's going to log into that host machine and actually create the VM on that environment so that we can migrate the data over. And in just a moment, I will go ahead and fire up vCenter, and it will show you. And in just a moment, and there it goes, the actual VM VL records is actually being created now. If I select on that, I don't think anything shows in the console yet, but it may give me some information here. As we start the actual migration process, we can follow the migration process from the VM point of view, and it tells me here this is what it's doing. This would be on the console for that VM. And I'm going to go back to the actual migration console. So at this point, it has created an ISO boot media for the VM. It's going to copy it over. Then it will actually boot that VM up. Once that happens, I can go on and continue the migration process. It does need to do a few, I call them checks and balances, to compare the actual source against the actual target to make sure there's enough network traffic and enough data. But once this is booted up, we'll know when to complete the migration. Okay, at this point, the VM has booted up. The system has actually gone out and done a test. It checks the source server, the destination server, and it checks the bandwidth and the latency between the two connections. That way, there isn't a problem during the data transfer of that source to the target. Once it's done that, and that test time can be changed, ours is set at two seconds because we have a pretty fast network. If you have a slower network, you need a little more time for the testing parameters to take effect, you can change that time here. Once the tests come back green, I can go to next. This gives me some options for the actual destination server and the source server. Do I want to run check disk on that source server before I do the migration? If there's errors in the OS, errors on the drive, you want to correct those before you do the migration. That does take a little bit longer. For the purposes of the demo, I'm going to uncheck that and just skip the check disk step. And I'm not going to boot into any kind of development or connectivity option here. So at this point, I'm telling it once the migration is completed, I want to reboot that destination server. I can hit next. It gives me step seven of eight, which is the last step before the actual migration. I can look at the data on the source server, the data on the destination VM, and verify which volume that I'm migrating over. Once I am aware or sure that this is what I want to migrate, I'll hit begin migration. The system will go out. It's going to actually reboot 
the actual source server into a safe mode for migration. Once it's done that, it will migrate all the data from that source server over to the target server. It'll load up everything that's there. Once the data is loaded, it will do some optimization. It will delete old device drivers, remove registry entries for the old server, and inject whatever new drivers are needed for that new environment. Once that is completed, it will restart that VM and be ready for daily usage. Once you do that, there are a few last-minute stuff that we can do, but to get the VM actually up and running, once it's rebooted, you're ready to go. While the migration is running, you can actually go out and look at the migration in process from the point of view of the source, which is the ILO on the vinyl record 00 server that we looked at, and that will be here. If I go to that window, we can see that it is rebooting now, and when it comes back up, it will be into a safe migration mode so that the tool can actually get the data from that source server without damaging any data that's been in use. We can also look at it from the target point of view by going into the actual hypervisor for the VM. If it's system center for Hyper-V or V center for VMware, we can go to the console for that server and see that that server is in a migration mode and this will update as the migration processes and they complete. Okay, the migration process has completed. At the end of the process, the last few things that it did, it actually booted up the target server. It ran check disk on the actual volumes that have been copied over and migrated over. It injected the new drivers for the new environment, then it rebooted itself again. At this point, if we go to look at that particular server, we will see that it should be rebooting one last time, and when it comes up, it will be complete. Now, there are things like the new hardware setup wizard, the normal things you do with a VM or with a new server. So you'll have to run the new hardware wizard as well as install the VMware tools. But at this point, the... VM is now ready to go for your usage. Um, in my environment, what I did just now, I did leave that VM with the name of VM VL Records. However, you could now change that name back to the Vinyl Records 00, which was the host name of the source that we started with. The source server will be left in a turned off state, and you should be good to go.